What's up with the gang? It's your boy Josh. Back with another video, man. Today we got King Von Rap Verse. <coughs> Today we got King's Von King Von <coughs> King Von Rap First Serial Killer Part Three. Ain't this part three? Yeah, part three. Oh, uh, I know we a little late on it. Um, we had other videos to do, but uh, yeah, we finna get straight into that. If you're new, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow the Instagram. Give me the 20k on Instagram, 200k on here. Let's get straight to it, gang. Knocked off. Sharp and telling the world that he's always armed and ready for his ops. Clearly, Vaughn was active in the streets, as well as on Twitter, claiming to be driving through his ops area literally as he was tweeting, and saying that he has an itchy trigger finger. Vaughn would claim that anybody can get smoked for the right price or cause, warning his ops not to come near him or he will shoot. Vaughn would claim to never be putting his gun down because too many people have died in the gang war, taunting his ops, saying he knows that they want him, but it's not his time to die. Vaughn would even repost a viral clip from Worldstar titled When Keeping It Real Goes Wrong, a video apparently showing a group of people filming themselves going to Chief Keith's neighborhood and getting shot at, a clip that people would later claim was actually King Von doing the shooting. I mean, just imagine having the balls to shoot at people and then retweet the World Star video of you shooting at them. The same day as this, Von would claim that he's buying guns with 100 round magazines and wondering who he's going to shoot, as well as saying that he'd been gangbanging all day and now he's tired out. The following day, Von would tweet saying that others wouldn't do half of the stuff that he's done and plans to do in the streets, and Von would say that he plans to keep scoring until he wins. Only two days after that, Von would find himself attempting to score again. On the 29th of May 2014, an afternoon party would be going on at 5722 South LaSalle Street. Von would attend this party where he spotted two members from the rival gang. At this point, the mother of the person whose birthday party it was apparently told Von not to start trouble in her house, with Von saying that he wouldn't and leave it. Von would leave the party and go and get a friend. Big Mike, apparently telling another person who was still at the party on the phone that he was coming back and that they should take the children inside. Von and Big Mike would return to that party, parking down the street and approaching a group of three men outside the house, opening fire. Three of those men would be hit by gunshots, whilst Von chased them, allegedly yelling, why are you running? And when the shooting stopped, a 19-year-old man by the name of Malcolm Stuckey would be declared dead with a gunshot wound to the head. The Chicago police would respond to the shooting at 6.10 p.m., arriving on the scene where police were pictured securing the location around Malcolm's body. Apparently, Vaughn was really trying to kill two rival gang members that he saw at the party, ultimately hitting three people, but only killing Malcolm, who allegedly wasn't the intended target or even involved in the gang war. Perhaps this is why we never hear King Von in his career disrespecting or saying that he's smoking Malcolm like he did to many of the other people that he was rumored to have killed. But there would still be hints at his involvement, because while Malcolm had been laying in the street with a bullet in his head for several hours, only 12 minutes before he'd officially be pronounced dead, Von would tweet saying that he has some issues, but he cannot tell a soul about them. Meanwhile, Boss Top from Oblock would tweet that Von is the guy who sits people down if they run up. Now, it would take nearly two months for the authorities to connect Von to this murder, and during this time, he would continue to be prolific posting on Twitter. He would tweet that he was on the block with his gun in the early hours of the morning, just the day after the murder of Malcolm, and tweeting that all of the things that people are hearing about are him. He's the one responsible. He would tweet saying that he's killed so many ops that he doesn't have any more feelings. He'd also tweet that it's all fun and games until somebody you know is no longer breathing. And That's he would true. tweet saying that he did all of this on parole and just wait until he gets off with a demon emoji. And in another deleted tweet that was apparently reposted by somebody else, Von openly tweeted saying that he wanted to go on an all-out killing spree. However, King Von's crime spree would ultimately be cut short on prom night of all nights. Von would be pictured holding a gun at O-Block in his suit in the hours before prom, and he would even tweet warning people not to try him while he's dressed in his suit. Von would then end up doing a shooting in his prom suit with witnesses describing his outfit, ultimately leading to his arrest. Von's last tweet would be on June the 7th, 2014, the ominous statement, loose screws get nailed. He would end up being arrested on firearms charges on prom night, and then the following month on the 22nd of July, 2014, Von's accomplice in the murder of Malcolm Stuckey, Big Mike, ended up getting charged with murder and being taken in for questioning by the police. Then two days later, on July the 24th, 2014, King Von, already in jail, would be charged with one count of first degree murder for the killing of Malcolm. Yeah, he look like a... <laughs> I would say so. This, Stucky. This, this is so. This is just so dark. And two counts of attempted murder for the other two people shot in that incident. 
Von's arrest for this crime would attract significant media coverage, and he would remain in jail awaiting trial from June 2014 to December 2017. And during that time, his people would tweet from his Twitter account saying that they missed him, asking for visitors to come see him on his birthday, and posting clips and pictures of him in jail during his visits. <laughs> But while Vaughn was in jail, he would raise hell, apparently helping to start a huge fire on the wing in April 2017. He would constantly get into fights with his ops, apparently never turning down confrontations. That's why I can say Vaughn Vaughn had over 20 fights in that he was, he talk about jail, he talk about that shit like it's a rite of passage. Like every that was a street like him, he was like, jail was coming. Yeah, that's why he was always in that because he never cared about jail. That's how he was able to be the type of he was in the streets because some of these savages, like, and you supposed to, you supposed to do shit with that in the back of your mind, like knowing like, man, go south, go to jail. Well, shorty sliding up on my like the police don't even exist. He is smoke you broad day. Von would remain in jail for an extended period of time, around three and a half years in total. And during his time in jail, he picked up the nickname Grandsa, oh, apparently goodness. for his resemblance and image as well as temperament to the Black Disciples founder David Barksdale, also known as King David. King it's David. obvious that King Von took a lot of inspiration from the original founder of the gang that he repped, the Black Disciples. Not only going by the name King Von, but also frequently saying David Barksdale's nickname, often ending sentences by saying, on King David. From King David. Also, while Von was people be saying on King Day or is on King Day, that's they be saying King David. But jail away. <clears throat> in trial, you the got, conflicts you in the streets so would continue to play out. You got you got cats like Hoover. Well, Hoover, Jeff Fort. Uh, there's so many. Huh, there's there there's a whole lot to say. But at the end of the day, it's is to see how how this stuff is, is perpetuated um amongst our communities and you see how um, many 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 that roll with it they they don't care and many don't have a reason to care either so it's just, it's a it's a continuous vicious cycle of 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 darkness and it's just it's depressing would eventually get the worst news imaginable. His right-hand man, T-Roy, would be shot and killed in a convenience store on Valentine's Day 2017. Von's people would post Twitter tributes memorializing his friend and favorite shooter. And Von would later open up about the very moment that he got the news about T-Roy's death while he was in jail. Yeah, I picked T-Roy, man, that was my best friend. I got that nigga on my neck. I started throwing that shit. I got a game banging on my neck. I started... Hi, With Von saying that he completely broke down crying when he found out that his right hand man T Roy was gone. I miss my dog before they get my dog out locked up. Kill me, I broke down. I ain't bro, I ain't cried so long. But yeah, day, that's my n you know, I'm in jail. I'm fighting a murder. And I call it yeah, day. It's my right hand man. So I'm telling him like, all right, now since he goes, we can tell him he's getting that. Man, I'm gonna get you out, Von. I'm gonna get you out, man. Whatever I gotta do, I'm gonna get you out. I swear to God. Is that. It shouldn't, but for me, it, it it has an effect on on his music. For me, um, actually seeing this because I, at one point it's like I hailed him as such as I mean, because truth be told, he is a great story. But it could be live. All this could be live. It could be. It could be. But but it's like why put this this kind of stuff out, or and why just just get down like this? It, this just sad, all the way around. You know, but we in the street, you know that. Show. So he. He trying to hustle, he trying to rob, all type, he doing whatever he can do. He, I'm going to get you a lawyer, bro, I got you, you know. See if he tell give me a shot, be calling, man, I don't even worry about it, man. Just look, just you make sure you, you know. I mean, I'm going to figure this out, just be cool with that though. I call folks, I call folks, it's like, this on like Valentine's Day, you see what I'm saying? I call my mama back. Now she crying and shit, mama, what the f you crying for, you good? You know what I'm saying? Ooh, they shot T-Roy, T-Roy got... Oh, what? Who? What? 
Lo que hasta como vino a ver esto y un chido y que te doy, no, güey. Ah, ah, no. Now we call, now we call, now we call, no matter what's going on, what's going on. You got hit, you got hit, you got hit once, I'm chill. No, damn, 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 what the f going on out there? I'm T-Roy, got shot, look, look, this is a thing, y'all don't know T-Roy. Y'all got to leave our history of T-Roy, y'all don't know. Uh, T-Roy got to, oh, fuck that, that's T-Roy. T-Roy, that's T-Roy, oh, oh, you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't know T-Roy like I know T-Roy, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so when I hear he get shot, I'm, he, he don't want to talk me like, don't be lacking, oh, don't be, oh, don't be, you know? He was on me, he used to be on, he used to be on each other, you know what I'm saying? Because me and him. We back to back with my boy, you know what I'm saying? Folks got shot, I said, hold on. I said, the streets, hold on. Yeah, that's what who got shot, who? Gangster disciple. Nah, my, he a gangster. He, he got shot before. He a gangster. I said, the folks ain't make it on front of my I play it out, you know me, you know you got to play it out. You in jail, it's all type of goop ass around, you know these third people. All of your business, don't care anything about walk it off, I walk it off. I'm just walking around in circles on the deck, you know. And they put their arm around me. When I'm like, damn, you good, bro, bro, you good? What's wrong with you, boy? I'm, yeah, I'm good. Ooh, they, what's wrong? You got a farm, man. I'm, I'm good, you know. They what happened? I mean, they, they just killed T-Roy. Who he what? They, I'm T-Roy. They just, they just killed T-Roy. Oh, I got to break it down, okay, David? I couldn't help it. They, 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 they just hugged me. These some real, you know what I'm saying? We grown ass men. Folks grab me to hold me. Get to bed, you gonna be Irish, but you gonna be out on. Oh, hold on, boy, that's my best friend, boy. Ain't somebody just killed my best friend while I'm in jail. I'm in that gonna go crazy, yo. Oh, I'm in that don't know what's going on. I'm in that in that. Who the who the child? I'm in that man. On. Oh yeah, I'm in that in that. Nah, not my best friend. You know what I'm saying? I'm in that in that. If he get got, ain't a, a lot of hope for a lot of. Cause he be, y'all know how folks see his man, T. Royal. Oh, so T. Royal. Oh, let me see who else. The guys know the guys is looking like, oh, this preaching on. Oh, don't trip, you know. Y'all know this, this, it's that street. The street watching me like that. It's about the. I know, yeah, it's the street. I better pay attention. I ain't gonna keep doing. But this this don't supposed to be for free. Von would take T-Roy's death very seriously. Even after becoming a famous rapper, he would threaten to kill trolls who would DM him mocking T-Roy on his birthday. Fuck how you feel, you a shorty on, oh, I'll kill you, yo ass little boy, I'll choke you out my motherfucking hands and beat the shit out you. And then that shit fool you, boy, I'll drop my motherfucking location or you will pull up, I'll kill you for real, man. Yo ass, H-F-E Larry, yo ass a goofy, man. Yo ass is a bitch, boy. Stop fucking playing me, go play with somebody else, bro, I'll fuck you up for real. I don't even play like that again, for real. Despite spending three and a half years in jail, eventually Von would finally face trial for the murder of Malcolm Stuckey. Von's family tweeted from his Twitter account in November 2017 that they had been attending his trial at court. And despite what was originally thought to be a clear-cut case, Von's co-defendant would end up implicating himself and Von in the crime in an attempt to secure a deal with prosecutors, but ultimately backing out of that deal at the last minute, leaving prosecutors scrambling for any evidence that would actually implicate Von in the murder. Allegedly, eyewitnesses who saw Von that night failed to testify, and King Von would even later rap about the situation on the track What's Next, saying that they killed the only witness and that Big Mike was the only one who spoke. This turn of events would see King Von being acquitted of all charges due to lack of evidence, and Big Mike himself going down for 16 years plus- So he killed the witnesses? Kind of, oh, I don't know if he did in this case, but that's what they're, they're indicating. An extra 12 for backing out of a deal with prosecutors, they gave him an extra 12 for backing out. Mm-hmm. Well, going down for six. When you cooperate and you back out, yeah. They, they, ain't, they ain't happy with you. 16 years, plus an extra 12 for backing out of a deal with prosecutors, so a total of 28 years. After this, King Von would be a free man once again, beating a body and returning to the streets of Chicago with his freedom and a clean slate. The family of Malcolm Stuckey would later admonish Von on social media for getting away with this gruesome murder and going on to become a rapper. But as we'll soon learn, Von had zero shame about the things that he had done in the streets. In fact, he would wear the badge of a killer who beat a body with pride. And after killing an alleged seven people in total, when Von got out of jail, it would be time for a new beginning. As the newly free King Von would take all of his stories from being a killer on the streets of Chicago and put them into songs. Becoming a Chicago drill rapper with so much credibility as a gangster, 
his music simply could not be ignored. And soon, all over Chicago and around the world, Von's name would be ringing as people would begin to discover what appeared to be the realest gangster rapper who ever lived. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense. After being acquitted of all charges in the murder of Malcolm Stuckey, King Von would walk out of jail a free man once again around the 6th of December 2017, being seen walking fresh out of the gates on social media. <laughs> Von would also return to Twitter as well as the streets, telling 16 shot and visuals that his friend E Dog from O Block picked him up and the first thing they did was go and buy a gun. At the time of his release, Von wasn't yet a rapper. It's unclear if Von ever really had aspirations of transitioning from shooter to rapper. On the one hand, there's old tweets where he perhaps jokingly said that him and T-Roy had planned to release music, but nothing ever materialized. And on the other hand, he had also tweeted that if he ever starts rapping, you should kill the person closest to you because something ain't right. So it's safe to say that at least initially, Von's plans would He's saying because he's never gonna rap. Closest to you because something ain't right. So it's safe to say that at least initially, Von's plans were not music, at least not for himself, because one person who hadn't forgotten Von during his long three and a half years in jail was his childhood friend and Chicago rap superstar, Lil Durk, who had- Wait, they was childhood friends? I thought they met through the industry. I don't know. How did I know that? Three and a half years in jail was his childhood friend and Chicago rap superstar, Lil Durk who had tweeted his support for Von whilst he was still in jail fighting his charges and apparently calling him regularly, even providing money for a lawyer. Dirk would welcome Von home from jail with open arms, with Von actually revealing later that his friendship with Dirk had initially had an ulterior motive. And that at first, he was just planning to hang around Dirk and rob people that he knew just to get himself to $100,000. I wasn't no rapper, so, so it wasn't my, none of that rapper shit. I'm, I'm thinking like, I just need to get 100,000, I'm gonna be decent, I'm gonna rob this, and I'm gonna try to rob this other <laughs> And this is what I was thinking in jail when I, when I was, you know, before I got to jail, talk to your homie oh, wow. in the jail. Oh, I said, wow. They said, what you gonna do? I said, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go around dirt. And I'm just gonna catch me, I'm off. I'm, I'm gonna go around dirt. And I'm gonna catch me like two, three months. You see what I'm saying? And Dirk, I ain't gonna let him know because he's gonna try to stop me. After coming home from jail, music was the last thing on King Von's mind. He just wanted to get money and flex his newfound freedom. He would be seen fresh home, posing in new outfits on Instagram, with pictures celebrating his freedom, attracting threats from his enemies like FBG Cash. But it seemed that Von's friends would be looking out for him, and no one was looking out for Von more during this time than Lil Durk. Like Von into his life and entourage as he continued his rise as one of Chicago's most promising rappers. Dirk was working on his 2018 mixtape, Just Cause Y'all Waited, and that tape featured the classic track, Dirky O Crazy. Soon after getting out of jail, Von would be sitting in the back of Dirk's car, previewing this future classic before it was released. Perhaps the reason that Dirk wanted to play Von this track is because the song itself references Von's case, with Dirk rapping that a witness went missing and now Von is coming home. Once again, Von's real life of crime was providing inspiration for Chicago's biggest rappers. Clearly Dirk was inspired by the return of his newly freed hitter, and would continue spending time with him. Later that day, in the same Instagram Live, King Von would explain to Dirk how he grew his hair in jail just to keep himself warm, and explaining just how painful the shackles were that he was forced to wear whilst in solitary confinement. It was cold them nights. It was cold them nights. Four them gray, I'm under that blanket. You said that you told me, I'm not gonna Ooh, it was ugly. Ankle still got that scar on it, look for the, for the thing. The shackles, them chilling. Going to court? In the hole, you gotta wear shackles. Oh, no? Man, everything. Every day? Head time come out. Oh, Yeah, every day. You gotta get on the phone, you man. This is where you walk, we can do Right, no, no, it'd be the back of my shit, cause my ankles little as hell, I'm a fool now. Look, I got that Damn. Von would seemingly spend Christmas 2017 with Dirk too, with them being seen together on social media, listening to classic Chicago drill anthems by L.A. Capone. Moving into 2018, Von started off in classic savage mode, posting on social media toting guns and declaring his desire to bring war to his ops. He had been seen on clips on social media, walking through Oblock and showing the world that he was still in these streets, unt even after all of the people he had allegedly killed. Wow. Even speculating on who was in the comments on these lives, his ops, or the cops. Cold. Oh. 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 It'd be cold. 
cold up there. You gotta, it's like, <laughs> you have to get coats like triple fat goose and, and some folk, they'll, they'll know what that is, <laughs> but it'd be cold. You gotta, you gotta have your, your, your jackets right. Cause otherwise you're going to freeze. <laughs> As January went on, Von would continue to flex his muscles on social media, and he would be seen listening to NBA Youngboy of all people, whilst chilling with Oblog native Mana Duke and telling followers that they were smoking their dead ops. Lot of your dead mans. Phone them. Superman. Goddamn it. Brick man. Kobe man. And we strapped up. And we strapped up. Clearly, Von was still in the streets initially. After enjoying some time in Atlanta with Lil Durk, once he'd returned to Chicago in February, he'd quickly find himself in trouble, tweeting that he was riding around with a gun and weed. Then he would end up getting arrested at Oblock on February the 14th, 2018, the one year anniversary of T-Roy's death with this arrest taking place soon after he tweeted that he was in O-Block and armed on the anniversary of T-Roy's murder. Vaughn would be arrested on charges of shooting and bodily harm, with cops claiming that he ran from them and threw a gun, battering them in the process of the arrest, with the body cam footage of this arrest later becoming public, which showed a menacing King Vaughn telling the police with pride that he just beat a body and two attempted murders. So this is the gentleman we were chasing, but on video they went back, Went under the cars where we think he ditched it, got in the vehicle, we stopped the vehicle, get him out, battery, fight with that, the vehicle takes off on us when we got this, and then we get about 50 people around us. So, so uh, what happened? You're going to go to jail for battery to a police officer. Why it? Me? Where? Can you also? I got everything. What at? Thank you very much. We'll, we'll take I'm it then. I'm in cuffs since I was in the car. I'll go home. It's Valentine's Day. You got the plate number since you got it on tape, man? Hey, my man. No, oh, you don't have that. Wait, listen. All right. Yes, I know, but I wasn't ready. Come on, finish. Switch them up. Two ends, two gone teams. Watch, because he's going to. You look her. Hey, Juan. You ain't going to be in here now. No, I'm not trying to help you. What? You got a little? Yeah, wait. Here's one. I was there first. Oh, and she was here the whole time videotaping. 94. Oh, for majority of it, not when we got him out of the car. I cuffed him this way because wait. Because I let me go to my father's house. You like going to jail? What were you like him for? I bought him two two. I'm sorry. You want it? You're gonna have it. You're gonna want to cuff him in the back. Yes. He's all kinds of funny. Look out! Look out! We got you. Let go, stupid man. No, no, we got you. Let go. Yeah, we got it from here. So, you got locked up over here recently? No, hell no. What you locked up here? Huh? I got a jail. Be my case. I'll try with the whole yeah. person you're right. You are, you are, you are on video right now, man. It's cool. Yeah, I was there. Put your hands behind your back. So what I'm gonna try with right now? Put that on the door. We're gonna figure it out. Video. Now I'm not on um, the right. Yes, you are. For what? Probably a trespass over here. Oh, yeah. And hitting a guy. Hit who? Everybody got fur hook. Where's that big man? Okay, no problem. Thank you. All right. What's your coat? He asked him, man. The super cop. Where's his coat? It's in the back seat of the He called him the super cop. It's gone? It's gone, yeah. After the arrest, a furious looking King Von mugshot circulated online, but Von would be out within just a couple of days, tweeting that he believes that the cops have it out for him because he escaped those murder charges, and he would boast that he would never let them get him. Clearly, King Von wasn't ready to permanently move on from his life as an O-Block hitter, and he would still be going live on O-Block in March 2018, mocking their dead ops. Right, who got Tukerman? That's all we need. Hurry, Tukerman! Come on, Tukerman! My show got Trent, Trent, Poppy, Tukerman is a dude. I remember that name. Yeah, the dude everybody be dissing from Chicago. I can't be in the room without smelling too. I got at least smell it. I'm just to know, like. 
Just to know like Tuka still around in this Motel P fly and love and memory of Tuka. But Von would also continue to be seen hanging out closely with Lil Dirk, seemingly making regular trips to spend time with the rapper in Atlanta. At a certain point, Von and Dirk would be reunited with another friend and feared Chicago shooter, THF Bezu, with Bezu just like Von beating a 2014 murder charge for a shooting that occurred in 2009. Lil Dirk was now rolling with two certified Chicago shooters on his team, but the plan wasn't to shoot. Dirk planned instead to transform these hardened street figures into rap superstars, the realest rappers who had ever rapped with the realest backstories to back it up. Von would post pictures in the studio with Dirk, saying that he isn't going back to his old ways and hinting to an upcoming career in the rap game. Since beating his murder case and coming home, Von had the perfect backstory to kickstart his music career too. THF Bezu had essentially been through the very same situation. So Von and Bezu would be paired up and placed into a studio where they would record a song all about their shared experience beating real life murder charges. Something that Von and Bezu would open up about in a 16 shot interview. Me and some piece of bodies. Like, that's the story we can tell. Oh, yeah. Big with some bodies we be the on May the 27th, 2018, King Von and THF Bezu released their first song, Beat That Body, a track coming with shocking lyrics where Von essentially admits to catching bodies, beating them, and even saying that he now plans to catch more. This insane backstory would be irresistible for Chicago Drill fans, with Dirk later revealing that people instantly went crazy for Von's music in Chicago. And he see like, us what we doing is music, and I had a studio in my house. He just tried it, and when he dropped the song, like the reaction was just like, he next. I'm like, oh, he owned something, you know what I'm saying? But Von didn't seem too hopeful for his rap career to begin with, barely promoting the song, and seemingly having no plans to give up his full-time job as an O-Block driller, or at least shot caller, because in the months that followed Von's musical debut, killings would still continue to play out in the streets, with Von appearing to remain plugged into the action. Not only giving Von and his gang even more credit in the streets, but with these murders also providing Von with the inspiration to get back into the booth, where he would continue to record music all about the deadly violence that he would soon become famous for. <laughs> While King Von was in jail, numerous people from Oblock ended up getting killed. Perhaps it was precisely because their most fearless shooter was in jail that so many people ended up passing while he was gone. Von was particularly hurt by the killing of T-Roy, his right-hand man. And after T-Roy was killed, a new set of gangsters would form in Oblock who went by the name Get Back Gang. This was a hardened crew of shooters whose sole focus was to get revenge or get back for the murder of T-Roy and other beloved O-Block natives who had been killed while Von was in jail. Another one of these fallen O-Block affiliates was Chino, who was shot dead on the 17th of July 2016. Another, Big A, was gunned down in a restaurant near O-Block on the 4th of December 2016. Get Back Gang would be on a killing spree trying to avenge their fallen friends, looking to kill anyone who played a role in their demise. Poppy, believed to have been involved in hits against O-Block, would be gunned down at work on the 16th of June 2017, allegedly being shot in the head by an O-Block member called Heck, who would go on to be known by the nickname HK or Headshot King. HK was T-Roy's brother and would reportedly avenge him, with T-Roy's alleged killer TB or Terry Barry being shot dead on the 26th of December 2017. However, HK himself would end up being killed in O-Block too, just before Von got out of jail on the 24th of November 2017. Another person who seemingly lost their life to get back gang's revenge campaign during this time would be FBG Brick, FBG Doug's brother, rumoured to have played a role in giving up T-Roy's location to the Ops the day he was killed, with Brick and his friend Kobe being gunned down in a Get Back Gang attack on the 17th of July 2017. In fact, many of these murders played out in 2017 whilst Von was still behind bars for the murder of Malcolm Stuckey. And when Von got out, despite becoming a rapper, spending time in Atlanta with Lil Durk, and seemingly taking a step away from the gang war, Von would still seem to be looked at as a senior figure and shot caller to members of O-Block and Get Back Gang. And when they killed again, King Von would be on the sidelines celebrating the murder as if it was one of his own. On June the 13th, 2018, King Von would tweet saying that there's a new rule. You can only diss or smoke a dead person that you yourself actually killed. Only days after that tweet, Get Back Gang would unfortunately claim another life. The next unlucky person to be killed would be a St. Lawrence native by the name of Can't Get Right, AKA Man Man, real name, DeAndre Wallace. On June the 15th, 2018, around 9.50 p.m., Can't Get Right is waiting for food this? outside of a store. Are you following this? Some of you. It's too, this is too, it's, boy, it's too much to try to follow this. On 400 block of East 63rd Street. At a certain point, two people pulled up and waited outside. And when the target was spotted, those two men ran up 
opening fire, killing both the target as well as an innocent bystander that was just there sweeping up outside the restaurant. And once again, the shooting and immediate aftermath were captured on CCTV footage and by witnesses in clips that are far too grisly to show you on YouTube. Both men shot in the incident were pronounced dead at the University of Chicago Hospital, with the news even later reporting on this assassination. Morning, are looking for the gunman who killed two men overnight. They were standing outside of a store in the city's Woodlawn neighborhood when someone started shooting. A 43-year-old man was shot in the chest. He died at the hospital. The other victim, a 22-year-old, also died. Police say the 22-year-old is a known gang member and was the intended target. King Von would go live on the same day as this double murder alongside Mimo 600 while still in Atlanta with Lil Durk's team. And in this live, King Von would set out to poke fun at his murdered rivals immediately after they were killed. And let's not forget, only days before this, King Von tweeted that you can't disrespect the dead unless you played a role in killing them. With that in mind, King Von's livestream after the murder was truly a masterclass in self-incrimination. They would start the live off lighting a blunt and saying that their smoking can't get right and asking the viewers what just happened. There you go, there you go, can't get right. There you go, there you go. Can't get right, can't get right. I like, hey, everybody, not at one time. What just oh, happened? Dang, <laughs> What just happened? A lot of glitches to happen. Oh, you right there with your hand. I'll tell you, tell me what happened. Who got killed? That's what I'm asking y'all. Who got killed, gang? Yeah. Can't get right, got killed. Murder. Can't get right, got If somebody that. show me a picture, I don't think I know y'all talking about. Is this can't get right? Is that can't get right? Hold on, is Chill this him? Is this can't get right? Him? This ain't called snitching. I'm just trying to get verified. Give me verification. From here, people start commenting, can't get up. And it seems that the O-Block hitters are so amused by this wordplay, they essentially confess to being involved in the murder on the spot. They tell them, can't get up. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> they always make some shit before we do it. They beat us to it in time. Y'all should start killing people. Oh, we and y'all be doing this, you be doing the man. Oh, Steve, this ain't crazy. After this, we see the crew say that it's two people down and that they're going to have to roll another one, whoever it is. Seemingly unaware that it was an innocent cleaner who was killed in the incident. They said two down. Dang. Two men that, no, nah, I can't oh, take Oh, David, they said it on both our lives. Two people? Two people? I can take one. Somebody roll another one. Can't take two. Whoever else got nah, here. They even started. Up. He talking about somebody roll another one. Nah, that's messed up. It's just sad. Come on mockingly to the ops posting long tributes to their fallen friend on Instagram in real time in this live. See that paragraph under that picture, you know it's over. Damn it's best friend, kind of you just told me to pop out. I remember back in the days when you do 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 You just told me to pop out, best friend. <laughs> Why the f you do me like this, you bogus as hell? Well, he ain't trying to. They gonna be this is From here, Von and his friends would continue mocking the ops by specific block and saying that the FN gave him a fresh fade like Lil Boosie. Steady taking losses. <laughs> STL, steady taking losses. <laughs> I'm gonna give him a fresh fade, Boosie Boos. Hey, they fuck with folks up. F, he gave his ass fresh fade. Fresh fade. Why did they even put him on front street like he was even like that, though? Then King Von comes back and says straight up that Man Man must have known he was going to die and that no one will care he's gone. He probably knew he was gonna die. Oh, did he? I wish I could talk to him. <laughs> Don't nobody even care about can't get right like that. I don't think they're gonna slide like that. <laughs> I don't think nothing's gonna happen because of that, so. They for the waste the rest of their money on that We ain't even gonna act like nothing's gonna happen. Just y'all going to the house. Whoever ain't get shot, you lucky today. I'm going to go in the house. It's over. After this, they even started reliving the hit, saying that their ops aren't used to somebody jumping out of the car and firing at them nonstop. You ain't used to somebody just popping out a cut for real. Look Licking at, you. at your ass. Really on your ass. You just... The flat pass your head, you just want to do like one of these because you act like you fake tough. But get the hit you, you damn, this shot can't move. Crump getting that there, look for they got you too. <laughs> Whilst King Von is on live bragging about this hit from another city, O-Block members Muwop posted a picture on Instagram with fellow member Duke saying that they are shooters. Meanwhile, E-Dog from O-Block jumped on Twitter to say that the get back is not over. Just the day after the murder, King Von tweeted saying that the stakes are higher now than ever and that the police have their eye on him. Von later tweeted claiming that his brothers made the new op pack, literally giving direct responsibility for this murder to his team. It seemed clear at this point that Von was not only happy about the killing that his friends from O-Block were doing, but he was actively encouraging it, and quite possibly the one giving the orders. Friends of Man Wan would post outright saying that they believed King Von paid for the hit. Doing all that, tap him up and see if he can get up and all that goof ass 
No, I'm talking about two. Whoa. Do you guys feel that it was somebody from the other side that may have did it, or you think it was like a random act of violence? Yeah, I watched this shit. Why is that this nigga snitching? We you know did it, man. All these in the city did it, man. Okay. That hate us. But they ain't gonna step outside them gates, though. But they know. King Vaughn, we gonna say his name, King Vaughn. But Vaughn honestly didn't seem to care about anything at this point. And despite the fact that word was spreading that he was the shot caller in Get Back Gang's murders, Vaughn wasn't trying to keep this a secret. In fact, he was ready to broadcast that message to millions of people. Because on July the 31st, 2018, Lil Durk's Only the Family Involved Volume 1 compilation album releases. The project featured yeah, many of Lil Durk's the friends. Stuff. Yeah, LTF, Only the Family. Boy. You lucky I didn't know at the time. Alright, that was the end of this video. Uh, subscribe for part four. Subscribe for part four. Uh-uh. <laughs> if you new, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow the Instagram. Give me the 20k on Instagram. 200k on here. If you ain't wearing no socks, subscribe. Mm -mm. Y'all be safe, gang. Peace.